Finger Lakes BOCES colleagues, welcome to All Staff Day. Will everyone please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, States of America. And, and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under, under God, 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 indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Have a great year. Hello, this is Dr. Vicki Ramos and I'm your District Superintendent for Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES. And welcome, welcome to the 2020-21 school year. And welcome to All Staff Day. And you're gonna say to me, really, welcome? Under these circumstances, welcome? Well, yeah, under these circumstances, welcome. We all know that COVID hit us back in March. And when it hit us back in March, what did we know? Nothing. It was, it was all of us staying at home, not knowing what to do, figuring things out. Every day we learn something new. And so you're back now, September 1st, and I'm saying welcome. Yes, there are uncertainties. We know that COVID will continue to give us uncertainties. But think of what you knew in March and think of what you know now. You've conquered, you've beat the challenge. You've been able to say, you know what? There's things I can do. So let's really talk about that. If we're starting this year, and the topic of this year is managing uncertainty, what does that really mean? How do we manage uncertainty under these conditions and circumstances? And then you might say, I can't manage myself, how am I gonna manage others? Let's, let's stop there for a moment. You do have to be able to manage yourself to be able to manage others. You do have to be able to take care of yourself to be able to take care of others. You are absolutely right to feel that way. You are absolutely right to become aware that fear is part of this moment of uncertainty, but we have to go beyond the fear. We must at this moment say to ourselves, how do we build awareness that this fear is true, that it's real, but I can do it. I can conquer it. I can challenge myself that today be a better day than yesterday and that whatever tomorrow brings, I can do it. And so how do we do that? You know, when you think about conquering pieces and having fear, we all work with that every day of our lives. So I'm gonna tell you a little story that reminds me that we don't think enough about the fact that we do manage uncertainty every day of our life. We do. We become aware of something, we become aware of a fear, and then all of a sudden we have a plan, and if we need help, we ask others to help us because we know we have to go from A to B. So in knowing that, let me tell you this story. So this past weekend, my adult son, who's now living with us, like all COVID-19 adult children are, back with their parents, was so excited that he was able to go visit his two friends from high school that he has not seen since March, his best friends, and they decided they were gonna go camping. So they were gonna go out to Old Forge, and they each were gonna have their little tent, and they're gonna be at a campsite together. And so he leaves excited, he's so excited, he's gonna see his two best friends from high school. They meet up there, they're around the campfire around 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. He said they were just talking and laughing with the fire, having a great time, and all of a sudden he said he heard this rustling in the branches, like 25 feet away from him. And he was like, hmm, what is that? And he heard it again. So he says to one of his friends that's sitting right next to him, hey, he had a lamp flashlight, one of these big ones in front of his forehead, it says, shine it over there. There's something over there. And his friend shines it, and they all looked, and it was a huge black bear. Well, my son said, Ma, I didn't even have two seconds. I ran to the car. I left. I don't even know what I left behind. And so did all of his friends. Within seconds, they were all within the car. So, and then they decided to 
to beat the horn. This is brown bear was going nowhere. And it went directly to their ice box and started to open and eat those little marshmallows that they had in there. And then they're honking the horn. This bear is going nowhere. And they're all looking at themselves. My goodness. And now it's eating the oranges. And then it got bags of chips and kept eating that. And so they decided, you know what? We got to call the park ranger. So they called the park ranger. Within five minutes, the park ranger comes and has this loud horn and gets out and says, Dorothy, what are you doing here? You know better than to be eating this and sounds the loud horn and off goes the brown bear. This big black bear actually. Off it goes down the hill. And my son arrived that morning at four in the morning. So he didn't wait and stay to see if Dorothy was gonna come back. He said, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna deal with Dorothy anymore. But you know, this brings me to the story of what we have every day. We might not have black bears, but COVID could be our black bear. It showed up all of a sudden. We didn't know what we were doing. We were stuck in our homes. We couldn't see our loved ones, but we started to figure out what can we do? And the doctors helped us there. Science helped us there. Right. right now we know that there are safe things that we can do. We, add, uh, we know that we have to wear a mask. We know that we have to consistently wash our hands. Those two items are keeping us safe and we know we have to watch social distancing. Those are facts that we've been given. Our emotions can be up here but we also have facts today that we didn't have back in March. And just like my son and his friends. He didn't know about the horn, but he learned. He learned that if they go back to Old Forge camping, they need that horn for those black bears. And guess what he did? You know, they had fear. They didn't allow fear to paralyze them. They acted on it. They tried two items that didn't work. The, the, the car horn wasn't loud enough and the lights didn't disturb it because the fire was going. It wanted that food. Dorothy has gotten used to those campsites. But guess what they also did? They reached out. They found a resource, they looked for support, and that's where I wanna go back to us opening the school year and opening our schools. We know that it is okay to have fear, but we cannot be paralyzed. We must continue to move forward. And to move forward means to have a plan, but that plan has to be flexible because we have to be prepared for tomorrow. And the third thing that is so important is we need support. We need each other. We don't have all the answers. And remember in education, problems don't belong to one person. Problems belong to all of us. And it's between all of us that we must find a solution. Together, everyone achieves more. And that is so primal right now during this time of COVID. So as we move forward to this year, when I would write to you and say, Bose is strong, I meant that from my heart. I have been encouraged by all of you that are here today. I've been encouraged by all of you that have continued to work and figure this out. Thank you, thank you for your courage. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for taking this opportunity to help each other be able to figure this out. And there's one last word resilience. We've talked a lot about that. Building resiliency, that is so important. You know, studies right now with COVID-19 say that it is extremely important that we build resiliency by being positive. Because during lots heightened emotions of fear, positive thinking is the best key. So I'm gonna say to you what I've been reading a lot about that says every night before you go to bed, don't make a list of all the things that didn't go well. Don't think about that. Make a list or think of one item that you're grateful for, for that day. Because you know what, we can all think about it. Maybe the day wasn't perfect, it didn't go the way you wanted, but I bet we can all figure out one thing that did. Be grateful for that one thing. And then go to sleep so that your mind has that positive synergy right now as you're thinking about it and you can rest better through the night. Because if we all together recognize that fear is okay, but it cannot paralyze us, recognize us that a plan is needed and that we need each other to be able to help us get through this so support is essential and that we will build resiliency in this organization by being grateful 
about one thing every day so that we can then can deal with the challenges that tomorrow brings. So again, I will say to you, welcome, welcome to our school year. Welcome to All Staff Day. And I know, I have no doubt that we will get through this. Stay safe, stay healthy, and don't forget about your three W's. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch social distancing. Bye-bye. Welcome to the celebration, and thank you so much for being here and allowing us to celebrate you for your dedication and your commitment and your hard work for the Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES family, community, and organization. But more than anything, thank you so much for everything you do in making success possible. So I'm going to pass this over to Quinn, and she will get us started. Good morning. My name is Quinn Smith and I'm the Director of Human Resources at Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES. It is my pleasure and honor to help to present the Years of Service Awards today. Today we'll be honoring employees throughout the day who have worked and supported our students, programs, services, and component districts for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40 years. Although this celebration will look different, we are also honored to call you colleagues and to celebrate you today. At this time, I would like to congratulate all employees receiving Years of Service Awards today. This is an exciting career accomplishment, and on behalf of the entire Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES organization, I'd like to thank you for all that you do to help support and making success possible. We will begin by recognizing our colleagues who are here today to celebrate their five years of service. Matthew Ackerman. Diane Allegretti. Brian Ayers. Christine Barrett. Steven Bergstresser. Keith Kalman. Brian Heidi. Eric Hokinson. Dawn Goda. Just grab one. <laughs> and come on through. Thank you. <laughs> Thomas Mosier. Michelle Orbaker. Jamie Randall. Stephanie Weger. And Matthew Wood. Thank you, Matt. Matt. Thank you. Now we'll read off all the names so that we can congratulate all of our colleagues who are celebrating five years of service. Matthew Ackerman, Selena Eldridge, Diane Allegretti, Emily Asari, Thomas Atkinson, Ryan Ayers, Christine Barrett, Stephen Bergstresser, Ryan Booth, Heidi Borges, Ashley Bremer, Kelly Birch, Matthew Bish, Keith Kalman, Lauren Dettinger, Ruth Engel, Jack Freer, Betsy George Jones, Don Goda, Catherine Haywood, Brian Heidi, Eric Hokinson, Paul Ingersoll, Peter Kelly, Nicole Kimball, Alicia Kuhn, Julie Larson, Tiffany Marshall, Tom Mosier, Carolyn Mullen, Stacey O'Quinn, Michelle Orbaker, Kelly Palladino, Emily Palmer, Audrey Perry, Emily Petropalo, Susan Petropalo, Jamie Randall, Irene Reed Shoup, Jason Semmel, Sarah Tyler, Amy Vicky Bates, Stephanie Weger, Matthew Wood, Nancy Younglove, and Margaret Zepedis. Thank you, everyone. So we'll start by reading the names of those colleagues who are celebrating 10 years of service and who are here with us today. Nancy Cunningham. Nancy. 
Christopher George Herbeck. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Aaron Fairbairn. Congratulations. And Carrie Spellman. I'll now read the list of all of those employees who are celebrating 10 years of service this year. Caitlin Cook, Nancy Cunningham, Emily Enslow, Katherine Fisher, Laura Frey, Mahali Glitch, Chris Herbick, Aaron Fairbin, Lori Pagano, Mark Pellegrino, Jennifer Peterson, Andrea Shingsting, Kaylee Schlentz, Carrie Spellman, Leah Wangler, and Alyssa Wyjat. I will begin today by calling up um, our colleagues who are here to celebrate their 15 years of service. First up, Tammy Best. Next, we have Linda Frasca. <laughs> Next, we have Donna Murray. <laughs> and lastly, with us today is Heather Smith. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather, and congratulations. Okay. And now we'd like to congratulate all of our colleagues who are celebrating 15 years of service. Stephanie Elfieri, Patrick Bailey, Tammy Best, Velvet Bortel, Mark Easton, Linda Frasca, Amy Eatings, Teresa Laird, Lori Lamp, Linda Levine, Lynn Matisse, Karen Munson, Donna Murray, Matthew Newman, Marilee Nizansky, Lois Richman, Adam Smith, Heather Smith, Joseph Spizzato, and Kelly White. We'll start by reading the names of those colleagues who were able to join us today to celebrate their 20 years of service. Um, first up, Sue Carbone. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue, and congratulations. Next, Sue Denny. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sue. Thank you. Toby Gardner. Thank you, Toby. Congratulations, Toby. Thank you. Evelyn Goodsell. Thank you, Evelyn. Nina Kohovic. Thank you, Nina. Mary Landry. Thank you, Mary. Congratulations, Mary. Bonnie Morrison. <laughs> Gary Rosenthal. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. Keith Rotash. Thank you, Keith. Congratulations, Keith. Pam Sessler. Thank you, Pam. Matthew Steiner. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Congratulations. 
Joanne Woodard. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. I'm now going to congratulate all of your colleagues that are celebrating 20 years by reading the entire list. Susan Carbone, Douglas Cochran, Susan Denny, Matthew Ebling, Toby Gardner, Evelyn Goodsell, James Johnson, Nina Kohovic, Michael Carnes, Mary Landry, Melissa Lasher, James Margenthal, Gregory Moore, Bonnie Morrison, Kim Necessary, John Renahan, Gary Rosenthal, Keith Rotash, Jennifer Shank, Pamela Sessler, Deborah Siegel, Mary Smith, Matthew Steiner, Deb Tebolt, and Joanne Woodard. of 25 um, years of service, we had gathered some thoughts from supervisors about each employee. What we are going to do is we're going to have different cabinet members take turns reading about each of you in the room. We tried to match you up with um, the cabinet member that may supervise your department, except for in my lucky case, I'm going to read about two people today that I do not supervise, but I have had the opportunity and honor to work very closely with because of their relationship with the union and um, the intermix of that with my office. So today I'll start with James Buck. Jim's industry connections and assuming of responsibilities beyond the classroom and on behalf of teachers, students, reflect so well on WTCC. Throughout his career, he has been dedicated, caring, and student focused. Jim has the ability to connect with students and they and their families understand that he has had their best interests at heart and will go to great lengths to make sure that they are successful. Jim, thank you. Next, I'd like to honor Donna Arnell. Donna is an asset to Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES. She has always believed in focusing on a student's abilities and not their disabilities. She supports students and colleagues while maintaining professionalism. She has given and spent many hours advocating for her coworkers. Her selflessness and dedication is endless. Thank you, Donna. Good afternoon, I'm Erin Fairbin. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Instruction for P16, and I have the pleasure of presenting to two individuals. Tom Chappell. <laughs> Tom truly cares about the well-being of all the students he works with. He is helpful, sincere, and committed. Throughout his career, Tom has made it a priority to take the time to build solid relationships with students, and that is often the key to their success. Thank you, Tom. Virtuals and hugs. <laughs> Nancy Robbins. Nancy purposefully builds a relationship with everyone on campus, creating a caring, supporting environment at FLTCC. She is dedicated to the well being of the staff and students at the program. Nancy makes success possible in her efforts to keep the many moving parts of the center working in harmony. She is a glue that holds us all together. Thank you, Nancy. Wow. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Sullivan and I am the Assistant Superintendent for Innovation and Accountability. And it is my honor today to celebrate Billy Cornwell. Billy's growth began at WFL BOCES as a young mechanic and today as he stands here he is one of the most valued individuals we have on our team. He goes out and troubleshoots calls, facilitates projects with confidence and represents BOCES throughout our region as well as the Genesee Valley region for a number of districts that contract work with us out on that side of the region. He's always going above and beyond to support his role, his team, as well as the organization and he's understandably a huge value asset to our team. So, congratulations. I'm going to do elbows or something. There you go. <laughs> I'm Kelly Ekdahl. I'm the director of Edutech and I'm here to recognize three members of Edutech. You all are kind of nervous about what I'm going to say, right? You should be. So anyways, the first individual, uh, uh, by the way, 
all three of them I've had the, the honor and pleasure to work with for many, many, many years. Even one of them I shared a four foot cubicle with for a few years. So the first individual I'd like to recognize is David Elliott. Throughout his career, Dave has made the impossible possible. He is dedicated, reliable, and a leader for our team. Dave works tremendously hard to create a reliable and safe network that is used by every student, administrator, and staff member in each of the 47 school districts and two BOCES that we support, making success possible for an eight county region. Congratulations, Dave. Get your paperweight. Remember, Erin really wants one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. High five. <laughs> the next individual is Todd Huffer. Todd is dedicated, articulate, and detailed. He is a strong communicator that ensures our districts make wise decisions about their technology purchases. Throughout his career, Todd has made success possible throughout the region by supporting and advising our districts on their technology. Congratulations, Todd. And the last, last but not least, Diane Coons, Dee Dee Coons. Three words that describe Dee Dee are knowledgeable, reliable, and perseverance. Dee Dee always works hard to support her peers and ensures that all tasks and projects are completed in a timely manner with accuracy. She is extremely dedicated to her role in the organization, her colleagues, and team. Congratulations, Dee Dee. Nicole Betts. In her role, Nicole supports the creation of an environment that is physically appealing and supportive for all students. She's creative, talented, and reliable. Nicole understands the importance of supporting student success and works to ensure all students feel welcomed and part of our community. <laughs> Ken Hill. Throughout his 25 years, Ken has accumulated a wealth of knowledge that he openly shares with his teams and coworkers. Ken has created lasting relationships and his contributions are invaluable to the districts he's come to know and care for. He is not afraid to think outside the box to provide solutions to students and his colleagues. It doesn't hurt that he bakes a mean cookie either. <laughs> Tracy Caper. Tracy is consistently student focused in how she approaches her work at WTCC. She is compassionate, committed, and student centered. Tracy is dedicated to serving the students in our region, and regardless of the task, she always brings care and concern for her students. <laughs> Dorothy Kike. Dorothy is truly dedicated to making her therapy sessions fun. The work she does with children is a testament to her knowledge in the field and dedication to the students and families. Dorothy is known for being responsive and reflective, and she is a whiz at March Madness. <laughs> Jan Soper. Jan has an amazing grasp of content and easily connects with students, most often students that truly need a consistent and trusted adult in their lives. She is caring, dedicated, and hardworking. In addition to Jan's classroom, she readily assumes duties and responsibilities for WTCC and BOCES as a whole, representing our organization well and making success possible throughout the region. This time, we are going to call up cabinet members to read a little excerpt about each of you that are in the room today that was helped put together with your supervisor. First up, we're going to have um, Michelle Sullivan, who is our Assistant Superintendent for Innovation and Accountability, read to us to celebrate and congratulate those of you who have 30 years of service. Good afternoon, everyone. As she said, my name is Michelle Sullivan, and I am excited to read 30 years um, of service. So we're going to start off with Barb Diamond. Would you please come up? No matter what, Barb will give the students her best every single day. She can always be seen supporting our students and their needs with a calm and consistent approach. Throughout her career, Barb has made success possible by being calm, patient, and persistent. Our next honoree is Bill Hobart. It is said that Bill absolutely loves his students and if you've ever seen him with his kids, it's exemplified every single day. 
You can always count on Bill to use his sense of humor, his playful manner, and allowing students to feel comfortable, safe, and to try new things. He's patient, understanding, flexible enough to meet each student's specific needs. He's a team player and always willing to implement new strategies and support students with emotional and behavioral needs, making success possible. <laughs> Cynthia Pettit, it is your turn to come on up to our ex. Cynthia goes above and beyond the duties of her role as a paraprofessional. She helps supervise the WEC Student Council and assists in organizing all senior activities. She's organized and helps keep her classroom running smoothly, all with a caring heart. <laughs> Yvonne Pryor, come on up. Yvonne is steady prepared and creative at all times. She makes sure all the details are completed on the back end so the teaching and support staff can do their jobs with students every single day. Yvonne provides the support that most people never see, allowing our program to make success possible for students. And Cindy Smith. Cindy takes the time to develop positive relationships with students to make them feel safe. Her never-ending diligence and ability to make knowledge-based judgments ensure that all of our students under her care are successful every day. She goes above and beyond to make sure all of our students are not only getting the medical attention they need, but they also know that they are cared for, making success possible daily. Walter Robarge. Wally has a reputation in the region for producing work-ready graduates. In fact, many conservation-associated industries have several WTCC graduates as employees, including many in the supervisory positions that continue to support the program. He is genuine, caring, and knowledgeable. Wally is truly dedicated to our students and works hard to develop relationships to ensure student success. Ruth Brewer. Ruth is committed, determined, and focused. She is always working to support student success and going the extra mile to provide support. In her role, Ruth supports adult learners in working towards their HSE diploma and helping them realize that success is possible, increasing their confidence and providing important skills for their future. <laughs> Beth McNeil. Beth is driven by doing what is good, right, and best for each student. She works with each classroom team to ensure instruction is individualized to meet each student's specific needs, spending an endless amount of time to meet with teams, creating structure and routines to provide students a supportive classroom environment. She is student-focused, dedicated, organized, and truly committed to all our students. Stephen Merritt. Three words that describe Steve are detail-oriented, customer-focused, and dedicated. He has a wealth of knowledge, problem-solving skills, and is truly dedicated to his colleagues, team, and the districts he supports. Steve makes success possible by his hard work, keeping our district's technology up and running. Kim Yanko. Kim has a wealth of knowledge about curriculum and instruction. She has a student-centered mindset that guides her to provide valuable instruction to her students while being flexible, helpful, and organized. Kim goes above and beyond expectations to get to know her students. We'll do one last round of applause for everyone receiving 30 years of service. going to honor those who have 35 years of service. For this group, we're going to have two different cabinet members reading names. First up, we're going to have Keith Henry, who's our Assistant Superintendent for Administration, come on down. Good afternoon. I'm Keith Henry, the Assistant Superintendent for Administration, and it's my honor and privilege to honor Sandy Baker for 35 years of service. As a payroll team leader, Sandy's work impacts every single employee in the BOCES. She goes above and beyond to make sure 1,000 plus employees get paid on time and accurately, putting in countless hours, even addressing employee needs on her days off. Because of her efforts, we did not skip a beat, even in the midst of the COVID crisis. Sandy is a dedicated hard worker who truly cares about her colleagues 
and performs her duties with the highest of customer service. Congratulations. Next, Erin um, Fairbin, Assistant Superintendent for Instruction P16 is going to come and read the remaining 35 years of service. Thank you and congratulations. The first one is Tom Boucher. As a speech therapist for 35 years, Tom has touched the lives of many students. Tom is patient, a team player, and always focused on student success and their individual needs. He believes in the power of establishing a positive and supportive working relationship, making success possible. Thank you, Tom. Mana Cardinelli. <laughs> Mana's knowledge of BOCES, pedagogy, content, life skills, and everything else <laughs> is highly valued at the Finger Lakes Secondary School. She always provides her students options and choices and is so quick on her toes when she needs to be. Throughout her career, Mana has made success possible for the students throughout our region by being creative, talented, and adaptable. Thank you, Mana. Thank you. Andrea DiCarlo. Throughout her career, Andrea has focused on ensuring students are able to effectively communicate through verbal and written expression, supporting their success. Andrea is a dedicated colleague who is energetic, flexible, and caring. She makes herself available anytime a staff member is going through a challenging time, or she may just stop by the office or in the hall to share a positive thought. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea, very much. Jane Stobie. Jane arrives every day bringing her best to support students, even when they may not be feeling their best. She is steady, confident, and committed. Jane always has the students' needs in front of her at all times. She is always there for them, supporting their growth and success, always with a warm smile. Thank you, Jane. Julia Maslin. Julie is always thinking of students first, even with the most complicated and challenging students. She's a very dedicated employee and takes pride in working for Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES. Julie cares for every student and staff member in her room. She's a true team player, committed and caring. <laughs> Stephanie Ross. Stephanie brings 35 years of experience and knowledge to work every day, working with many different types of students. She is a role model by leading with experience, and her veteran presence is a great support for our program. Stephanie is always willing to provide support and truly cares about our students' success. Last and certainly not least, we are going to celebrate the one and only employee in our organization this year to hit 40 years of service. And Erin has the honor of reading that message. I certainly do. Bill Stobie, would you come up please? so I should say William Stobie, can be described as hardworking, dedicated, and driven. He is an expert in the field of carpentry and enjoys working with others and our students to share that expertise. He models a tremendous work ethic for all of our students, providing them strong skills for the future. His commitment to the organization and our students is remarkable. Thank you for making success possible. We appreciate it. I think for all of you that have hit these significant milestones, one last round of applause is the least we could do. Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Sullivan and I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Innovation and Accountability. 
This year, as we open up our school year, we wanted to take a moment and share our wishes with you. My wish for each of you is that you know how incredibly valuable you are to our organization and that you also know how much we missed you while we were shut down. We welcome you back and we can't wait to see you every day. Hi, I'm Keith Henry, the Assistant Superintendent for Administration. About 15 years ago, we conducted pandemic planning. At that time, we thought we would not be able to allow to leave our homes. We thought we would not be able to pay the bills. We also thought our school districts wouldn't be able to pay us and that probably all we could do was payroll remotely from home and by direct deposit. Pleasant surprise, we found that we could actually come in during this a real pandemic, that school districts could still pay us and we could pay the bills, and that we could come in person to uh, run paper payroll checks and not just direct deposit. So a pleasant surprise was things turned out much better than we thought. We could both work from home and come in to keep the business operations going. We planned so much for the pandemic at that time that the New York State Comptroller actually wrote us up for pandemic planning, stating that we didn't provide ample evidence that a pandemic would ever occur. I can't wait till they come back for our next audit. So now we come to what's up with the mask. Well, it does provide an extra layer of filtration. Just kidding. How about, I promised I wouldn't shave until the pandemic was over. Just kidding. Well, the real reason I did it is I thought, with everybody stressed out so much over the pandemic, people needed a chuckle. There's an old proverb that says, a merry heart does good like a medicine. So my advice to you is, why not overdose? Try to find the chuckle in each and every day. Dear BOCES community, my hope for you this coming year is to continue to find joy in your work and in your connections with others. My wish for this year is peanut M&Ms and Mountain Dew for all. My wish for you this school year is that you give yourself the gift of time. Remember that time and space can be our friend. Take the time you need, slow things down, use the resiliency skills that we've developed and allow yourself the ability to have self-awareness and the gift of being able to reflect on things before you respond. I wish you a great school year and looking forward to seeing you interacting with students and each other. Our wish for you, our BOCES colleagues, is to remember what Christopher Robin told his friends in the Hundred Acre Woods. You are braver than you believe. Stronger than you seem. Smarter than you think and loved more than you know. So please, remember, you're not in this alone. Always turn to your family, friends, and colleagues for support. Have a great year. Have a great year. Hey, Cindy, where's Dr. Ramos?